welcome back to Shifting to Solids. Today we're going to be talking about this split feature in Onshape. Um, and it does exactly what it sounds like. So if you follow me up to the top, you will see uh, it lives right here next to Boolean, which we talked about last week. When we hover over, split is going to tell us it selects entities to split for parts and surfaces. Specify whether to keep or remove the split tool for faces. Select the sketch curve, curve, surface, or plane to use as the split tool. So I'm going to click this really quick. So we can see that window. Um, but I want you guys to understand that today we're only going to be talking about the part tab. Uh, the face tab is if you're doing more surfacing. And what I've come to notice in Onshape is that I tend to work in the part realm. Um, there is a way and a different method of thinking using surfacing tools. And I know a lot of the 3D features we've used so far have a surface option. Um, and we haven't really hit on that. I think I'm going to finish this toolbar. And then I'm going to go back and try to show you guys how to do things from a surface um, standpoint. So today we're only going to be talking about the part tab and split, not the face tab. Um, you would think that it would do some things uh, like based off of faces of parts, but it's it's not as straightforward as you think it might be. So I'm going to get rid of this really quick. And like always, we need to start with some geometry lists. So let's start on the top plane. Hold down Shift and S to start a sketch. N to normalize your view and P to hide that plane. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a corner rectangle at my origin. I'm going to come to the left and we'll just make this uh, 10 by 10. We're going to make a, a square, 10 by 10 square. And off of the top, I'm going to make another rectangle that is 10 by 5. That way we get a uh, little bit of different geometry. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this point here. I'm gonna draw a line from that corner to my midpoint and a corner from here to my midpoint. So this is the shape we're gonna make. So 10 by 10 square, a 10 by five rectangle and just center to midpoint or corner to midpoint, corner to midpoint. Now we're gonna shift E to extrude it. And let's go up a solid 10 inches and we'll say, okay. Now we're gonna click this front face right here. Shift and S on this face right here. And the way you can check is you can see that rectangle is gonna tell me where I'm gonna be drawing. We'll do N to normalize our view. And I'm just gonna draw a rectangle kind of here and we'll give it some dimension. I want it to go, we'll say five from the side. We'll shrink that down a little bit. We'll go five from this side and we'll go five from the bottom. So it can hang off over the top because what we're gonna use is use this as a cutout. So we'll press shift and E we're gonna click remove, and I want this surface to go all the way through. Um, so I'm gonna switch it from blind to a through all, and you'll see now I have a nice cutout of this shape here. So we'll go ahead and accept that. So I have this different shaped uh, part. Um, what I'm gonna do, you'll see, it's not just if it was a cube, it would only have six faces, but if we count, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, around the perimeter. We'll go nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and the bottom makes 14. So our whole part, I have 14 different faces. So we'll uncheck that. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I wanna split this thing into various parts. So maybe this is the footprint and I'm gonna use this as some sort of, uh, maybe it's a mount and like this L shape over to here is gonna be one part and then this is gonna be another part, but I drew it as one existing. So we're gonna click our split tool. And if we zoom in on that box, remember it's gonna say parts or surfaces to or curves to split. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to click this part We'll zoom back in. Now it's going to say entity to split with. Okay. So what do I want to split with? Um, I could use this make connector feature. 
Um, but what I like is using these surfaces. So if I click this face right here, you'll see that it's going to use that. It's going to take that, that face and almost use it like a blade. And it's going to cut it across both sides. Um, you'll see now by clicking that face, if we come down here to the bottom, I now have three individual parts. So if I shut off some parts for viewing, um, if I accept this, I can shut off. There's part one, there's part two, and then our bottom plate is part three. Um, so maybe these are some blocks that are going to get some studs uh, for mounting, and then this will get aligned somewhere else. Whatever you can, yeah, you know, do a bunch of different deals. Um, but let's get rid of um, instead of splitting from that entity, let's split from. Let's go to the other side. Let's split from this face right here. So now you'll see it continues that geometry. And in this aspect, I only get two parts. So if we accept that, I can shut off part two. And I have there. I can turn part two back on, shut off part one, and you'll see I have two separate parts. One thing I don't like about the split feature is that it doesn't change the color. Um, I wish it would, the second you split it into a different part, it changes the color on it, but um, that's not how this one works. So let's get rid of that. Let's try it with a different face. Um, let's try this face right here. It'll cut it in half. I get two different pieces right down that center point. Um, some of you guys are wondering why would I want to do this? Okay. Um, why wouldn't I just go to my sketch and extrude two different pieces? Um, if you're in speed modeling, this is a good uh, practice to use because it's going to take less clicks. But also in industry, you know, a lot of the speed modeling practices we use is if I can get this job done and I can have way less features, if I need to go back and make a change order, I have a lot less things I need to change along the way. I can change a couple of things, click some things and go from there. Um, if you do keep both sides, you can uncheck that um, and it'll get rid of one. So maybe you only want the one side. Um, if I don't, if I uncheck keep tools, it'll, uh, it'll, it won't keep those tools, but it's looking like it needs to have, um, it needs to keep the faces of that part. Okay. Now, one of the cool ways to do this is using the make connector. So I'll show you that. So if you click here, before I was using faces as the actual splitting line. What's nice is I can use these make connectors as a way to split. So I don't really have a line that would split this, but I want this to cut this way. So you'll see based off of how that orients, it's going to cut right there because I set that center one. I could do the same thing just by selecting uh, this face. If I cut that face, it's going to do that. But what I can do that's a little bit different. If I can get it to grab a certain way, there we go. I can cut along that line and I don't have a face that will cut that the way I need it to. So using a mate connector is really cool to uh, use this feature the way I need it to. Again, I could uh, do an extrude, right? If I shut part two off, I could have extruded this out and made another block. Um, but then your feature tree starts to get really messy. So if you take a look, I'm able to make two parts in one, two, three, four, five features. Very, very simply, uh, very easy. Um, and maybe it's two parts that need to go together. Um, so let's roll this feature back, go up above it. Maybe I need to fill it to go across here. And then I'm gonna split it. So let's split it from here, well, maybe I want, I want that fillet to split over. I want it to match across the, across the board, but I want that fillet to carry over. So instead of doing two fillets on two different parts, now it'll, it'll exist together because I need that to flow. So if maybe you're doing some sort of coping or you're doing some sort of uh, shared fillet, you wouldn't have to redo that twice. So um, let's go back into split one more time. And one thing I want to show you is this face feature. We talked about it a little bit at the beginning, but again, this is for surfacing. So 
Don't think, oh, I want to split with a face. Let me click this face. It's not going to work the way you want it to. It's going to keep doing because it's looking for surfaces. And the way we drew this was as a part. So go back to part and use um, these tools here. Again, if you're running into some issues and you're like, I don't know how to do this. I've watched the video and I'm still kind of kind of lost. Remember, Onshape has this help down here and you can click the uh, little question mark at the bottom and it'll take you to a page full of all kinds of different uh, things you can learn from their program. Um, what I like to do is like look here, they'll give some examples, but uh, some of you guys might be doing this on your phones. Um, so what's cool is it shows you how you could do it on iOS and how to do it on Android. So um, that's going to do it for us here today. Uh, the split tool is really, really helpful, but it's uh, sometimes a uh, hassle if you don't know how to work your way around. So um, next week, we'll be talking about the transform tool. Um, and under here, transform, under that family, you'll have wrap and decal. Um, we'll do separate videos on wrap and decal, but transform is going to be a lot of your modification. And some of you guys are like, I drew this piece and I have no idea how to get it out of the way or how to do this or how to do that. Transforms probably what's going to solve most of your problems. So um, tune in next week and thank you guys for watching. Take care.